Okay, so my name is Simon, I'm from Swiss Transplant, and I will um, present a tool called EXAM, uh, written in R. So that means um, ex vivo allograft monitoring. And it's a tool that we already use at Swiss, at Swiss Transplant to do quality control in kidney transplantation. So just um, a few information about kidney transplantation in Switzerland. Um, it's the organ that is most often transplanted. So it's um, almost every day uh, kidney transplantation. And it's also the organ that is transplanted, transplanted at all the transplant centers that we have in Switzerland. So there are six. And one is also one of them is also here in Basel, the University Hospital in Basel. Um, and uh, it's also the organ where the wait list is the longest, so with the, the largest um, number of uh, persons. And also, in average, they wait the longest for an organ compared to other organs. Um, so as you can see by these numbers, there are not enough kidneys. Um, and so not all the persons on the waiting list will get a kidney transplant, unfortunately. And sometimes people also die on the wait list. So I will now talk about uh, kidney transplantation from deceased donors, because there is also kidney transplantation from living donors. So um, this is the machine that uh, is used to transport kidneys, not all the kidneys. So there are two ways. There is a cold storage box that's like standard therapy. And the second option is um, a hypothermic machine for fusion. So this machine is generating data and is uh, constantly perfusing the kidney with a perfusate, so a, a liquid. And it has been shown in high level evidence based on systematic reviews, meta-analysis from, from a Cochrane systematic review that it's really effective in reducing a condition called delayed graft function. So this is evidence-based and that's why we do it. Now, as I said, this machine is recording data. And so it's time series data. So this machine is used when, so with deceased donor kidney transplantation, often the kidney needs to go from one hospital to the other. Um, and um, this machine records pressure, flow rate, vascular resistance and temperature. However, there is no software available to read that data, to analyze that data and to kind of visualize the data. So, and that's why I created that, that R package. And there is also a preprint available uh, online. It's currently under review. So the software is a dashboard. It's based on the following tools on Flex dashboard. It's really easy to do <clears throat> on Shiny because there is some user interaction. So there is a drop down menu where you select the data set. Then the figures are in Plotly, so they are interactive. Sometimes it's important to zoom in to the time series data to see when something happens. But the core functionality is really in the Swiss Transplant R package that I created. There are all the functions to read this type of data, to um, process the data, like smoothing of the time series, to make summary statistics, and also some advanced measures for quality control. And so that's how it looks like. So there is a link you can try it out, maybe better on a laptop than on a mobile. Um, and the source code is available on GitHub. So we now uh, put a license on it. It is the GPL version three. So what that means for the manufacturer of the machine is it can use the software, it can read the code, it can modify the code, but they will not be allowed to not share modifications. So when they, when they uh, want to modify that software and also use it, they have to share the improvements with, with us and with, with, with everybody actually. 
So I found that is an important aspect. Now you can see uh, the, the tools on, for example, just on the, the bottom right, you see the temperature curves in the machine. So that's something which is very important. You see ice temperature blue and in yellow, you can see the temperature of the liquid that the kidney is flushed with. And then there are also some indicators, some summary statistics where we look at just to, to make sure that everything is, is, is all right with that kidney during transport. And then when you collect a lot of data, you can look at distributions, you can do quality control in terms of what are extreme values. Um, you can monitor quality over time. Uh, and what I'm currently doing is to develop an overall quality measure. Uh, so I want to have like one number that indicates quality. And I found that the Halanobis distance D square is really suitable for doing that. Um, so it's basically a distance measure that reflects the, the distance from a data point to the center of all the other data points in the multidimensional space. And it really works as um, expected. So here you can see uh, on the right side, some subplots with a D square of, which is very low. And then it's in constantly increasing. And also the time series get then, the temperature gets a little bit more abnormal. Uh, but fortunately, uh, in most of the cases, we have really good uh, results. So D square below 10, which means they are really acceptable cases. And that is like 80% of the cases. But in those cases that are not so great, we can easily detect them and then call the hospital, do some interventions. So that's really important. So in conclusion, this um, R tool can help to identify problems uh, during hypothermic machine perfusion of the kidney. It can measure quality. And then from that, we can inform healthcare personnel, such as teaching and checklists. So this can all contribute to the best possible treatment for kidney allografts, because we are not just treating an organ, we are already treating the patient, the recipient, because the TGF, this condition delayed graft function, that's then happening in a, in a person, in a real patient. So uh, with that, I um, want to thank all the people who are involved in this project, especially Helen. We looked at hundreds of these cases and designed the, the tool and also some of the transplant centers that are very closely involved. Yep. I'm sorry if I missed it. You might have mentioned it, but when do you look at this tool exactly in the in the process of before a transplant, after? Is it post? Yes. That's, um, so after um, transplantation, the data is sent to us, and then we look at it maybe a few days afterwards. So it's like after everything already happened. And if we see problems, for example, in one center, we have certain things that happen, we can make an intervention. But the idea would be that surgeons look at the data already when the life port um, transporter arrives and before transplantation, because they would really like to see that data. At the moment, it's not happening, maybe in the future. I really do ask, why is this not happening? Is this technically so difficult to extract the data or? The data is on the live port. You have to use a USB stick to copy it. But in hospital, they have no tools to look at that data. So that's why I created that tool. And because of that tool, this will then be possible in the future. Mm -hmm. But now it's not, it's not possible. They don't have the tools. So what they see is on the live port, there is a display and they, they see the numbers like pressure, flow, resistance, how it is right now, but not like what's what's happening in the last two, two hours, for example, or in the last 10 hours. Mm -hmm. 
So in the end, they would need a laptop with the software pre-installed, ready to go. For example, we have to discuss how this is most easily done. Mm -hmm. It could also be an online viewer yeah. where they upload the data and they see like a shiny app. Mm -hmm. So it already works online. I've provided the link, so please try it out. There are two uh, data sets which are fully anonymized. You can look at it. Good. Yeah. Maybe one more question. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. Um, do you have some feedback? Um, basically, if there were problems after the transplant patients, so you could maybe also think about building a model or something about it to predict outcomes, or is that um, is it still too early in the phase, or is that not possible from a data perspective, or like a regulatory perspective? You mean like when there there is a problem during after the transplant, if you can see, oh, this. Okay, there was like yeah, one yeah. parameter. parameter okay. from you. So in this um, perfusion machine, when when it fails and it doesn't perfuse, it's still an ice box. So it's still okay. standard therapy. So nothing really bad can happen. Okay. But with that, we can really reduce this condition called EGF. So we, we really want it to have to be under optimal conditions so that we have really this treatment effect as shown in the clinical randomized studies. Is that really our question, but how long can you keep that kidney in this box, uh, having good condition? Just to get an idea about which time frame you're actually talking here. It can be up to 20 hours. Mm -hmm. For kidney, this is the organ that you have most of the time. For heart, there's only four hours available. So it really depends on the organ, but kidney you have. Um, Okay. In average, the time is five hours in the box. So it's between Swiss transplant mm -hmm. hospitals. Mm -hmm. But sometimes kidney goes to Paris by train, for example, then it takes maybe 10 hours, 15 hours. So you have to monitor this all the time, actually. Yeah? It's, it's, I mean, you have to be, uh, if you see that there are changes to be able to inform them. No, it's not, it's not, it's not real time. But ideally it would be, right, in the end. Yes, but yeah, but, but then you get a difficult. notification at least. Yeah. Like so this. ideally, the, the, the transporter should be in perfect condition, like mm -hmm. ice and everything, so that you don't have to refill ice, so that everything is, so you don't need to do anything. It's just uh, optimal. Okay. Thanks. Interesting. Any more questions? No. Thank you again. Come on, very you. good. Oh, with that. No, there's no concluding slide other than that. Thanks for attending and coming here in such great numbers. That is very good. We hope to expand a little bit on this momentum gained today. So in, um, I think, uh, for just who is around and is interested in not the um, Wednesday to come, but Wednesday in a week, I think that is something like the 3rd of August, I, I don't know. We would like to meet with people interested in R in Unternehme Mitte, in the middle of Basel, so whoever has some interest, welcome to join. I will send later uh, something <coughs> around that you can look up where it is and when exactly. And with that, thanks again for coming and for a lively discussion. We hope we get that more in the future. Thank you.